appreciate that. That's this. So um, I know you've talked you talked to a Ross a little yes. bit about the mm-hmm. guest. I'm sure he's giving you a characterization of what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So I'll just maybe give a little bit of background to you. If there are any questions you have, I could up phone in details. Okay. And then super casual. I mean, we have questions that you know that we've asked, but truthfully, the info that we got from Javon and Stacey and Jessica was like this was a successful visit and you're awesome. you're, you're you know the cherry on that Sunday so to speak. So so you know, yeah, I'm much I mean, more interested in, in the color commentary than rigorously stepping through the prototype okay. and all that. That's stuff perfect. I mean stuff. last time I saw demonstrations you know, they were asking me all my input. I said, well, you're asking the wrong person because I'm not the one that's actually using the machine. I can tell you because I talk to them and I hear their exactly. feedback, but they, they clearly like certain designs more than other designs. Yeah. And, yeah. and so if, if there's a way of incorporating those as you're still building the device, that would be exactly. very useful. Exactly. So and that's that's exactly the intent <clears throat> of this. I mean, so you know the big picture that uh, Alcon is partnering with, with Mobile yes. or Santec to try to yes. integrate that Argos parameter. Have you seen that uh, a demo of the Argos anywhere? I have. Any? What were your curious? What your impressions were? Of that? It's a neat little device. Yeah. I, mean, I think it works really well. Yeah. The, the it's got a relatively small footprint or limited yeah. penetration into the field, mm-hmm. but it seems to be very well received. And I'm you know I'm yes. not in this field. I'm yeah. in user research and sure. digital design. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of fascinating to me when I see a device that seems to tick off all the boxes but doesn't yet have the kind of penetration you expect to see. So yeah. it kind of makes sense, this partnership, in a way. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I, I think, unfortunately, when it comes to the diagnostic business in, in clinics, people want us, unfortunately, when we were kind of going the digital route in the early, well, late 90s, companies went belly up. Yeah. And clinics had 10, 12 machines yeah. that are now not supported and right. they've invested a lot of money that yeah. essentially is now wasted. Yeah. So now they're a little bit skittish and they want to, yeah, them. they just want to invest in companies that yeah. they know are going to be around yeah. more than one cycle or two exactly. cycles. And so, okay. you know, that's the problem with Movis, is like nobody's heard of them outside. They don't of, have that right. track record. They don't have that track record. So, you know, Alcon partners with them, boom, that's a huge, exactly. you know. Yeah, and Alcon obviously gains from having, you know, a top of the line biometer integrated Correct. into all that. Um, Correct. Um, that's good. So I, I got a sense in, in and talk with Javon and Stacey in particular of the, the different devices that you guys use, the LensStar and the Iowa Master, and, yes. um, and when you need to do immersion A scans and, you know, yes. and the gallery for topography and so forth. So I think I have a, a, a good picture of, of what that flow is and the test right. that you do in, in all cases or in most cases in certain mm-hmm. cases. Uh, I'd be curious to hear from your point of view, though, why you've chosen to work with the devices that you have. So what, what underlies the decision, not only to use the ones you have, but why you lean on the LensStar, you know, as the primary measurement that gets integrated into the plan, but the IO Master, it sounds like for kind of a sanity check in some of these measurements. Yeah, so I mean, I think, um, uh, I mean, honestly, in, in the past, just just because it takes so much time, effort, and energy to master devices, I try to find what I think is the best device on the market, and, and, and then and then constantly reevaluate to see if that's still the best machine in the market. And so what, what's, um, what, what drove all of this was, you know, we used to use ultrasound as the sole method of measuring eyes. It was inherently flawed because it was a very indirect way of measuring the eye, and unfortunately it was very subject to the user interface and user experience to get you a good versus a bad quality outcome. So then you fast forward to optical interferometry, the first IOL master, which was like in 98 or 99 in the U.S. when it was approved. <clears throat> um, and it was like, wow, this is a highly reliable mostly um, operator-independent method of measuring the eye. And so um, I thought it was great, but then we realized that it would, it improved the quality of capture of one of several variables that can influence the outcome in cataract surgery. So you really can't just, okay, you buy this box, now you get better outcomes. We discovered that there's more to it. And, and that's where I kind of learned about Warren Hill, who kind of introduced me into this whole concept. And... Um, what I didn't realize, because we didn't have another player, mm-hmm. was that you can introduce better methodologies of ensuring that you have realistic captures and mm-hmm. fidelity in your captures by how you design the software and how the machine operates in terms of its capture. Yeah. And so LensStar came on the market. I kept hearing more and more about it, especially from Warren Hill, who I trusted. Sure. And he's he's telling me that this is a great device. So we we um, we were going to be upgrading our machines. Mm-hmm. So we brought both in. Okay. And when I started playing around with the LensStar machine, both it, being that and the Owl Master. Yeah, there was a new version of the yeah, Owl Master.